Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater, and I will be uh, making along with you today. I am the uh, gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Um, and so it's my voice that you are hearing or reading as we explore week two of string. And uh, this week, I thought what we could try is some painting with string. So if you joined me uh, last week, we explored uh, drawing with string, and you can still check out in, uh, that episode and any of our previous episodes. They are all saved online on Facebook or YouTube or on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. Uh, so for this week for painting with string, I collected a couple of things that, uh, that I'm gonna explore with today. And so if you can find yourself some paper, and as always, when I say paper, I mean um, you, out of the recycling bin, it can have things already on the back of it, it can have water damage, it can be ripped. Um, really taking things out of the recycling bin, you know that you've got permission to use these because they were already going to head out to the garbage. Um, and nothing we're making is for keeps, so using recycled paper is great some string and really that's any kind of string uh, that you can find whether that's cotton string whether that's yarn uh, whether that's twine and uh, I really I really learned to love twine last week so I'm, gonna, I'm excited to try that again um, or even some floss some some floss for your teeth that will work as well if you have some thread really any kind of thing oh I also I found some rope that was hanging around and I really like the frayed edges on these so uh, I think I'm also going to explore with some rope so if you had the um, the end of some rope that was in a workshop or uh, that you have permission to use that's starting to fray we're going to see how that works this week so any kind of string uh, scissors um, I suggest using some some scissors uh, just to be able to cut the string um, but if you just want to play with one long piece of string, that's fine. You don't have to have a pair of scissors. If you just, uh, if you've already got one cut, um, you can use the middle of the string. You could use the end of the string. Um, you've got two ends already, uh, with one piece of string. So you don't have to have a, a pair of scissors if you don't have, um, some available, or if the only scissors you have are really sharp, um, and you don't have a grown up available to help you cut that, that's fine. Um, then I have put paint because we're going to be painting this week. And so if you have some paints, whether that's watercolor or acrylic uh, and any kind of paint that you might have, that's great. But um, you might not have some paint right now and you still want to participate. And so I wanted to I wanted to suggest some some other options. Um, so if you have some food coloring, if you've ever done some icing um, before icing cakes or cupcakes, you only need a very tiny amount of this. And while this will st stain your fingers, it's non-toxic. So it's, um, it's not going to hurt you if it gets on your skin. And while you might be dyed a little bit green for a little while, um, this, this is very safe to use. And you can just put a drop of that in some water. And there you go. You've got some, some paint you can work with. I wrote down cornstarch here. There's a really cool recipe um, that... Lily shares uh, both in our gallery, but also on our Facebook page on how to use cornstarch um, and green food coloring to make a waterless paint, which is really awesome. And so you might know that that recipe, or you can go and check that out. That is archived on our Facebook page. You could boil some veggies. Uh, so my favorite food, my favorite vegetable, my favorite food of all time is cabbage and red cabbage in particular. It makes this great purple shade and it it will stain your fingers as well even if you don't cook with it but um if you um if you yourself are um allowed to use a stove or if you have a grown-up that can help you um if you had some cabbage um even green vegetables any kind of vegetable really check it out you can boil some of those down and then you can have some colored water that you can use for paint as well and then i also wanted to say um if you've got any turmeric um, this, this spice, uh, which you will find in a lot of, uh, 
Asian or um, South Asian and Indian cuisine um, is great. It's it's so strong the the color of it. I have um, I've used this to uh, actually dye clothing before cotton, where I have put. Uh, I put in a, um, a bathing suit that I had that was kind of a off white and I boiled it with a bunch of turmeric and it turned bright, bright yellow. And so you could take some uh, turmeric and you could add a little bit of water to it. And then you've got some uh, very, very bright yellow paint. And so there's options beyond just having um, paint to explore. And even if you do have paint, you can try all of these things and see how they're different. Uh, the last thing that I put there was gloves. And so everything that I'm going to use today might get my fingers a little stained, and I'm okay with that. Um, but if you are using any of these that are going to stain your fingers, you may actually want to find some gloves. And so that could be anything from gloves that you use to uh, wash the dishes, or if you have some um, nitrile or latex gloves uh, for cleaning or to protect your hands, you might want to do that, especially if you're going to be using um, food coloring. But if not, just go slow as you're exploring and try to keep your fingers away from what we're making, but you'll see, I'll get a little bit messy as we're going this week. Okay. So you know who I am and I move this sticky. Let's explore together. Move that over here. Move this over to the side a little bit. Here we go. And so I have this big piece of paper here and it's got some marks on the other side. I've used it for other things. I'm going to use this as my background uh, this week. Um, actually just, sorry, not as my background, as my backdrop. And so I'm going to paint on other things on top of this because uh, I want to protect my space. And so while I didn't put that here, um, if you had some newspaper or some newsprint or an old t-shirt um, that you were going to throw out, some rags, whatever, make sure you protect your space as we're going along because we don't, you know, we don't want to just uh, worry about staining our fingers. We also want to uh, respect the space that we are working in. Okay, lots of setup this week, and that's always the case whenever you're painting. The cool thing about drawing um, or paper ripping um, is it's pretty easy to get started, uh, whereas paint, you have to be a bit more uh, intentional. You have to slow down a little bit. You have to think about everything and set it up beforehand so that you don't make a mess. Um, but we're going to make a mess within this space because this, this is the clean space that I've set out that we can, we can get a little messy. All right. So for our warm up, I thought what we could do is we could just look at some of the string that we have and see what happens when we try different things. So we don't really have any kind of uh, goal in mind. We're just going to see what happens when we do different things. And so if I was thinking about a paintbrush before I got started, I mean, I could start by just taking my string and putting it in my dry paint and seeing what happens. Uh, but I've done that before, and I know that um, I need to activate my paint. I need to get it a little bit wet before I can transfer it onto the page. And so, just like a paintbrush, I'm taking my I'm taking my um, my cotton string that I have here, and I open I frayed the edge a little bit, but I don't have to. I could have a nice clean edge on one side, and then a frayed edge on the other side. I'm going to get both of those wet. And then I'm just going to touch them in the paint to begin with. Just dab it a little bit, see what happens. All right, I got a little bit of pigment, but not a lot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fingers and I'm going to rub the string down into the paint a little bit. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Okay, so. The difference was is that before I had a little bit of paint, but now you can see that I got both my fingers, but also the string itself has started to become the color of, of the paint itself. And so just like that, I'm going to try and put it on my page. There we go. Okay, so this was the thinner line one, the one that I didn't, uh, I didn't kind of spread out. I can get these, these cool lines put that down over there and this one i did i did kind of fray a little bit so that it's a bit more fanned out and this one's got it's a little bit harder to control i don't really know what strand is going to touch the page 
uh, with the with the paint as I go along. So it has a bit more of an organic textured feel to it. Cool. All right, I'm gonna dip these back in water and see what happens. Remember when I say, see what happens, I don't know what's going to happen for these. I'm just uh, exploring along with you. If you get an idea that I haven't tried or that is inspired by something I'm doing, go ahead, check it out, see what happens. You can always let us know if you have permission um, in the comments by telling us uh, what happened when you tried different things and we'd love to hear from you. Okay, so that was with a bit more water. Okay, so I'm still getting that that really clean line that I got before when I didn't have a lot of water on it. Look at that, a, basically a pencil, right? Can really control the lines. But for this one, it did kind of turn into a flat brush. I'm getting these thicker lines now. I still have pretty good control if I'm going in a straight line. What happens if I try and curb it? Well, that's a little bit harder. Still got a pretty good swirl. What, what about this one? I go back and forth. Oh, a little bit less controlled. I can't really make a sharp turn. Still are a little bit curved if I wanted to. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I just have to lift, lift the string. Looks like I've got some fuzz. I think that's some floss fuzz. Put that over to the side. Cool. Okay, so those were just with those ends there. I'm going to put those over to the side because I want to keep trying some different string because we're just trying. And I'm going to go over top of this because um, this is just, this isn't for keeps. This is just seeing what happens. So I have this really thick, chunky piece of wool here. Um, I tried to learn how to knit a couple of years ago. And I thought if I had some really, really big, thick yarn, that would help. Turns out I am better at crocheting than knitting, but that's okay. I wanted to try it out and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to put my string, my yarn, down into the blue. And so without adding more water this time, just like before, we'll see what happens. All right, basically what we noticed before, kind of with the, the larger string, because there's a bigger surface here, I can get these nice big lines. What about if I add some water to it? Oh, but because there's more water and more paint that I was able to collect in this big fuzzy yarn, check out all the color that is at the end of each of these lines here. I kind of had it a little bit here, but I didn't have it at all in these smaller lines. I basically have the same amount of color all throughout but these ones. You can see I've got these really dark lines or really dark areas at the end. Cool. Okay, I'm going to add some more water again. I want to see if it'll do a drip. Yep, there we go. It's really, it really collects a lot of, a lot of the paint. It doesn't want to drip at all. all. Right, same thing as before. Okay, yep. Still got the, the extra at the end. Okay, what about curves? Okay, so this bigger yarn, I think because it's more wet. Oh, it picked up some green in there. That's cool. Um, it doesn't, it makes even bigger curvier lines than the small one did. So I was able to make these large looping, looping lines as I went along. Okay, I'm going to put this over to the side. I'm going to pull out my twine. I say it like that because I really enjoyed working with twine last week. I didn't think I was going to enjoy working with twine and I pushed past it. I, I went, nope, it's okay that I don't really like how fuzzy it is. Um, I, I, I don't need to have a nice clean piece of yarn. Um, I can try it with the, with the twine and it ended up being the most fun. Okay, so for this one right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water right to my paint dish over here. I did it to my, my, my red. And instead of adding water to the twine, I'm just going to go in this really soupy, soupy paint. There we go. All right. All right, let's paint with some twine. Oh. We go see what happens all right because there was a lot of water on it 
it still made these kind of thick areas like a brush. And it collected like the yarn where there's a bit over there, but it still has a, a kind of organic feel. Like I'm not really sure where, where the paint is going to collect. And you can see I'm kind of moving, moving the twine around as I move it because I want, I want to see, I want to have kind of a random um, element of which of these different fibers hits the paper as I go along. There we go. I've got a bit more pigment this time, a little bit more color. Yeah. See as I twist it. I am so happy that I had the twine. Just all these things that I wouldn't have ever tried. I'm going to bring it over. Oh, I think I got a bit of blue. That's cool. I'm going to add some blue and red. I'm going to go right off my page over here. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I really like how twisty, how there's these kind of um, enthusiasm and energy lines that are around the outside that I wouldn't really be able to plan for. I really, really, really like the twine. Okay, I'm gonna put that over to the side. What else do I have? Oh, I had my rope. So this one, this one was more just because I knew I had it. And if you've ever used a really big brush before, um, this this large multiple strand um, rope that I have that was kind of braided around the outside edge, it just feels very much like a broom. And so, sure, not broom, a brush, a normal brush. And so. I, don't, I wouldn't really feel, I don't really feel like this is exploring too much because I've worked with brushes a lot in the past when I've painted. So I kind of know what to expect. So this one I feel like is going to be the most boring one that I, I know the most um, as I'm going along. But let's try it out because we should always try it out, even if we assume we know. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the red again. I'm going to get another piece of paper out here just so you can see as we go along. I'll move this over to the side just so we can compare. There, put this over here. All right, I'll go with the red. Put a whole bunch at the end of my brush. And here we go. Oh, it didn't do exactly what I thought. Because the strands are bigger than a brush, usually a brush has smaller strands you don't get to see all of these lines, but because each one of these strands kind of picked up a different amount of pigment, I got these, I got a wash of all the color, but I also got all of these cool lines. Oh, see, I'm really happy I tried that. If I hadn't tried it, um, I wouldn't have, have realized that I was able to do that technique. That's cool. Okay, one last thing, because I have some twine, or not twine, um, some floss here. And I might as well use all the things that I've got that I pulled out just to see what happens. Okay, so this time, this time I'm going to get it wet. Actually, this time what I can do is I'm going to put all of the twine in there. Or sure, not the twine. <laughs> I have twine on the brand because I really like it. Uh, I put all the floss in there, and I'm going to add some, I'm going to add some uh, water to my blue. I don't know if you can see that, that might be off the screen, but I'm adding a little bit of water to my blue tray. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this floss and floss is pretty water resistant, right? If you think about when you're flossing your teeth, you don't really want it to absorb water. It needs, because it could, if it um, absorbs saliva, it might actually break as you're going along. Okay. So what I did was I balled up balled up my floss and I'm just smearing it down into the paint and so now I've got a whole bunch of paint on top of my floss and I'm just going to drop it on the page okay does it leave a mark kind of let's try it again so I can't really I can't really plan for where it's going to land and how much paint it's going to drop but this is another way if uh, if I had if I wanted to have a splatter effect without like taking a toothbrush or a paintbrush and making it really mad going all over the place. See how it goes kind of off the page when you do this? This is a little bit more of a controlled way. I could just keep going, add a little bit more water again. And drop it. 
Oh, so a little bit more water. I'm getting splatters with, do you see how it's a little bit lighter now? Because before I didn't add water. So you can get different, uh, different amounts of water on your splatters when you drop them by putting water on before or putting water on after. There we go. Kind of looks like my red has a, has a bunch of freckles now. Cool. All right. So that was us warming up. We just wanted to try out and see what our different kinds of string that we have would do. I'm going to move these over to the side and see if they'll dry a little bit as we're going along here. I'm going to move that all the way off to the side because there's a lot of water on that one. See if it'll dry while we're making. This one I didn't have a lot of water in, so it's pretty, it's pretty dry at this point. Same thing. I'm going to move that over to the side. And so we've warmed up. We've, we, uh, we explored a bunch of different techniques. I think I got a sticky for that. Yeah, there we go. We explored a bunch of different techniques, as in things that would happen um, when we used the string in different ways. And so now we have that information of what will happen or the kind of marks we can expect when we're using the different kinds of string. So if I brought this out, if I wanted to make, <laughs> you can see I have paint on my hands and I've made the page a little uh, dirty and that's okay, right? Because these are, this not, none of this is for keeps. So which of the techniques that I tried before created lines? If I wanted to have a really consistent line, well, the yarn was pretty good, right? Because I was able to get really, um, really gentle slopes. I was able to figure out exactly where I wanted to go. It did create a lot of pigment. It did put a lot of color at the end of my lines, but in general, I had the most control with this. So if I was thinking, if I wanted to explore um, lines, drawing or painting lines, and I almost said draw there because really painting is drawing, but with paint, right? If you think about it, it's just a different, a different tool. So rather than a, a pencil, maybe you're using a brush. But there's no reason why you couldn't use a brush in some charcoal or some graphite, which is the, the graphite is the stuff that they use that or the lead in the pencil. Um, and there's no reason why you couldn't add water to a pencil drawing. So a lot of these techniques, um, you're you're doing the same the same thing. There are some things really you can only do with paint, the material paint, and there's cer certain things you can only do when you have um, like a marker or um, even just a pencil. Um, but in general, you can use the techniques and ideas and things that you learn um, as you're trying both when you're doing um, painting or drawing. So I'm going to paint with my yarn a line that I could draw. And so I'm going to draw a circle. There we go, right? And so I did that with yarn and paint, but I could have done that with a marker, right? Let's just keep going. Let's, let's make a face out of this. Happy face. I'm gonna go with some smaller eyes. And so because I know from trying before, um, how, how controlled my curves are going to be. I can kind of expect it when I try my picture. What else does this character need? Maybe some ears. And then maybe some hair, maybe a really big. There we go. Oh. And stay all the way this time. I still have a lot of pigment in this yarn, right? Still a lot of color. I could even make some details in the ear. Oh, I have a little bit less water. So now it's starting to be a little bit harder to control. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Just like when you're painting, you don't wanna, don't wanna totally dunk your brush. I mean, you can if you're going to try it out, right? This is the this is the time to try it. How much water do you actually need? And add some bangs. Oh yeah, and you know what? I think I'm going to try and color in. There we go. So I'm trying to use the side of the yarn now, more of it, 
now that I've got a bit more water and not quite as much color. Still a lot of color in there though. There we go. And so instead of just using the top of the yarn, I'm using the side of the yarn. trying really hard not to touch the end of my yarn so that the yarn itself still has a lot of wiggle room Woo! spraying water all over right because what I could do is I could try and bring it right down so that I was holding the yarn but really that's more my finger that's drawing at that point right I really want the yarn to be able to go wherever it goes oh this character is missing a what that's right there we go. I'll give it some nostrils so that it can smell. A little part of the lip where it comes up. Maybe a bit more of a there it's smiling. Maybe some dark dots in the center. Oh, so that's something I didn't even name. So using the end of it like a dot so I can control the size of, of uh, how much I'm putting down. And you know what? I'm going to add some freckles because that's what we're trying right there. And there we go. So I painted this drawing with this piece of yarn because I knew how much control I would have with this big piece of yarn because I tried it on my technique page before, so I knew what I could expect. Okay, I'm gonna put this over to the side, let it dry a little bit. So that was using um, string as uh, to paint lines. But what about, what about string as something to tie, right? That we, that we use to tie things. Have you ever used, uh, actually, if you've ever tied your shoes, right? You tie your shoes closed. Uh, if you've ever had a bundle of sticks or uh, a bunch of cloth, or if you've, ever, if you've ever gone camping where you have to tie up your, um, your sleeping bag or your memory foam underneath your sleeping bag. Lots of reasons why we would use string to tie things. If you have been learning how to do things in the kitchen, you might've seen somebody um, use butcher's twine to tie up meat or vegetables um, before you put spices in soup. Sometimes people will tie up spices. And so there's lots of, lots of uh, reasons to use string to tie. But what if we wanted to tie something to be able to paint with it. And so I was thinking, I've got a whole bunch of old, there we go, older pieces of sticky from previous, from previous sessions. Do I have another one? Yeah, there we go, over there as well. And so I thought what we could do is we could just tie up some objects that we find and then use the string to paint with them. This is just an idea that I had. So I've got all these pieces here and I'm going to use my string to tie it up, make my own brush and a totally unique brush. So maybe somebody else is also tying, tying up paper and they have a similar idea to us, but the paper that they tie up that is uh, ripped in the way that they ripped it um, is going to be different from the way I ripped it and the way you ripped it, right? So even if we all had this idea to use that paper, it's still going to be different. And you can see I'm still using the string up here at the top. And so just like my yarn where I said that I could use my finger and I could actually hold on to the yarn, I'd basically just be using my finger if I, if I uh, painted with my finger right behind it. And so I wanted to leave a whole bunch of the yarn up here that would kind of move around and not be exactly directed by my finger, it'd be the yarn that would kind of decide where the line would go. Same thing with this. So while I've used the string to tie off the paper, I've still left some string here so that the string gets to decide what's going to happen. Okay, so before I use water, I think I'm just going to take the paper and I'm gonna put some paint on it. I think I'm gonna use two different colors this time. I'm going to use the red and the blue. Okay, so you can see I've got a bit of paint on my dry paper, some, some wet paint 
on my dry paper and let's see let's see what happens so i'm kind of getting these random marks i'm getting some lines i'm getting some dots can't really decide i can't really tell how much is going to happen when i go back and forth oh i got a little bit more blue this time what well, if I go really wild all over the page, have a dance party with my paper? So those kind of freckle marks. Okay, I'm gonna move this aside. I'm gonna bring back the freckles that I did before. What do you notice? What do you notice that's different between when I used the dry paper with the paint versus the floss that I got wet? Also the, the background. So I already had some wet paint on my page when I added my wet floss. This was a dry page that I used wet paint with dry paper on top of. And so you can see, I still have the freckles. Ooh, excuse me. I still have the freckles, but they're not the same. This has a bit more energy. You can see these kind of lighter freckles behind, whereas this has doesn't really have any lighter freckles. Where the paint hit it, that's where it was. There wasn't a lot of um, extra extra marks. This feels more like fireworks or something exploding or dust falling down or sparkles. Whereas this feels more like freckles or maybe chicken pox or maybe some dirt splattered on the side of something. And so even though we could both we could describe both of these as splatter, I use different techniques to get them. And they still look a little bit different. This is a little bit more bold. This is a little bit more washed out. And so exploring all of these things to be able to figure out the different ways to accomplish this is going to lead you to have um, this, this toolkit of how to create things when you want a certain look. Okay, so before I said I was going to leave these as, as just dry paper. I think this is, oh no, it's not going to come out yet. Now I'm going to get the paper a little wet. See what happens. Still got a bit of paint on here. So before I even add some more paint, I'm just gonna see what happens when I add water to the page. Mm, not much, not super interesting. Kind of just smears a whole bunch of the water on, collects on the side of the paper. I think I liked it better when it was dry and I couldn't really guess what was going to happen. Okay, well, I'm gonna add some more paint to this again. Bit more water on my page now, so it's gonna collect a bit more. Oh, and so now it's getting really clumpy here. Let's see what happens. Oh, I wanna hold it by the string too. I was getting, I was forgetting to use the string. Mm, no, I don't really like it with the water. I think it was way more interesting when it was dry, the dry paper. Let's see if I can spread this out a little bit. See if I can get more pieces of the paper to touch the page again. Oh, and I ripped that. That's okay. Let's try it again. Nope. So what I learned was if I was going to tie off a bunch of paper, I think I would want the paper to stay dry and the paint to be wet so that I could get that really cool uh, effect. But yeah, the smearing of the paper, kind of disappointing. Not something that I would do again. Cool. But I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't tried it. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to the side. So that was us tying something else with the string to make our own new brush. Kind of tying and binding. Okay, so what about, what about um, string where we fold the paper? You ever done that before? So I'm gonna get some, some water, water on my, water on my string. And I'm going to get a bunch of paint. And if you had paint in like um, a cup or a bucket and it was like um, acrylic paint where you had a whole bunch of paint, you could just dip it. Because I have watercolor, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of patting my fingers down. You could also use another brush. If you had a paintbrush, you could put the string in there if you wanted to keep your fingers really clean. And then you could use the brush to help you get a whole bunch of paint um, on, the, on the string. But I, I didn't bring a brush over this week. I just wanted to use my, my fingers and the string. Okay, so, oh, cool. I got a, I got a drip here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the string to draw 
few things on the page. Kind of abstract, however I feel. Wherever the string wants to go, oh cool. Whatever lines it wants to make. And then I'm gonna gradually drop the string onto the page. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold the paper in half on top of the string that has paint on it, right? And there we go. I was able to get this kind of cool mirror vision. See how it has the, the two dots here and the swirly here? It's the same. So if I hadn't drawn beforehand, if I had just put the, uh, the string on the page here, I'm gonna add a bit more. I think I had a different color this time. I think I'm gonna add some pink. Um, if I hadn't just drawn it, um, I had just put the, the string down on the page, which I'm gonna do this time. I wouldn't have these extra lines, but I like it. I like it that it's not exactly perfect. It's kind of like a face. You know how your um, your eyes aren't exactly equal on your face. Um, it's kind of the same thing as that um, it's not perfectly symmetrical. It's not exactly the same. Okay, so I've added a bunch of pink to my string. And this time I'm just gonna place it on the page. Not gonna draw anything extra. I want it to come over here. There we go. Same as before, fold it over. And then, cool. And there we go. You can see the pink line here where it kind of smeared out here. Same on this side, it smeared out a little bit over here. We have two little dots came down. I really like this. And if I was going to be using this technique, I think this would be really, really beautiful to, um, to do for some flowers. Actually, I think I'm gonna try that with you right now. I'm gonna put this over to the side. So with this new technique that we've learned by using the string and the fold, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece of paper Okay, it has paper on the other side or stuff on the other side, and that's fine. Um, I think I had a second piece. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna cut it off so that I got two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some green. You could use brown. You could really use any color. Really get a lot of paint on my string. And you could try this while you're exploring with uh, short pieces of string or with long pieces of string. You could use multiple kinds of string before you fold it. Well, I could do that too. Maybe I will do that. Okay, so I'm going to place this like that. There. Oh, it's scraped a little bit, but that's all right. And then I'm going to use my big yarn. Get a little bit of the blue out of there, but if there's a little bit of blue, that's fine. There's there's blue in, in flowers all the time. And then I'm going to grab a bit more of the green. I have two different greens in my paint palette. So I'm going to see if I can get a second kind of green uh, in with my yarn here. Okay. And then same as over here, only I'm going to... Maybe I'll squish it over there. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to fold the page in half. Oh, so this yarn is really, really wet. <laughs> and it ripped the page a little bit. That's okay. I like it. Oh, cool. Okay, so I got the line here. On both. I think I'm going to do this again, but just with this one. I'm not going to add some more. I want to see how much paint stayed on the page just by going like that. And that's okay that my page ripped. Right? Just for, we're just trying things out. You could use different kinds of paper to see what would be easier. This paper that I'm using right now is just printer paper, and it's usually harder uh, when you paint with it. Um, you can actually find paper that is good for for um for paint 
that holds paint that doesn't doesn't rip up quite as much. I'm going to try and do it one more time because I can still see a bunch of the green. And I really like this vine effect that I have going on. Press down and unfold again. Oh yeah, there's lots and lots and lots of pigment in that in that um, that piece of string. Okay, so now what I want to do is I already had a bit of pink paint on this string. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. So just like I did before, only this time instead of just keeping it on one side of the page, I'm gonna bring it over here as well. To see what happens. There we go. Okay. Press it in half. There we go. Oh, lots of water on this one. But cool. Do you see how it looks like there's like there's flowers up at the top here? And I didn't have to keep it all on one side of the page. I think I want, I think I want some flowers. Oh, I think I want a little bit of red. I'm not gonna add too much water because this had a lot of water this time. I'm gonna add some red to my string. And I'm gonna put some flowers over here. Oh, and it moved around a little bit. So same as before, I'm gonna have some marks on this side that weren't on this side. And then I'm gonna bring it up over here because I wanted some red in these flowers. There we go. There we go. And you could take some markers now and you could draw on top of that. You could keep painting with the brush or you could just leave it like this. You could just, you could cut one side and then one side you could throw out. If you were doing it and you didn't like the rips, you could throw out the rip side and just use that as a background. Um, sorry, as, as the side for your final picture. Um, but remember, this is just for practicing. We're just learning. But if you wanted to do a final piece, let's say you wanted to do a card for somebody you wanted to have some pretty flowers on the front, you could totally do this as a card, cut this and then paste this in the front of a card and then you'd have some pretty flowers there. Cool. So that was using string to fold. I wanna do string one more time. But this time, I'm gonna add a chance element to it. So I still have more of my recycled paper. So without even adding anything on top of it, I'm just going to put some of these pieces in here by chance, I mean, I'm not, for, for the other one, I, I placed them where I wanted them to go. And even though I wasn't 100% sure when I folded them how much water was going to happen, I kind of knew where they were going to go on the page. So this time, I'm going to fold it in half again. I placed the string. So I kind of decided where that was, uh, where the string was going to go. I'm going to press it down so I got the lines again. But now what I'm going to do is without... Uh, without opening it, I'm just going to pull the string to see what happens. Here we go. Check it out. I still have this kind of flower feel to it. Do you see where it's smeared along the page? And so I couldn't have decided to do exactly that. The string had to make that decision. Here, I'm going to add a bit of water to this. Maybe I'll add a little bit of paint again. Okay, so we're going to do this again, only we're going to have more paint and more water. So I'm going to place it. This is a slightly different color of green, so maybe we'll be able to see it. I'm going to place it like this, put it in the spots that I didn't really have as much paint there. Then I'm going to fold the page again, press it down so that we've got that nice clean line so we know where we placed it. And then same as before, I'm gonna pull it. All right, what's gonna happen? Cool, cool. You know what, I'm gonna bring this back into my other, my flower picture. Cause I kind of, kind of really like that smear. Okay, got a bit more paint on my thing again. There's some green over, oh, green over here. Bring it down, bring it up like that. There we go. Well, there's a lot of water on it, so I'm probably gonna have something really messy like before. 
but remember I got it over the edge of the of the paper so I have something to pull on press it down so that I got my nice cool green line and pull what's gonna happen oh yeah so I have these kind of smear lines over here I think this one was too, too wet but it still works right it still looks kind of green I think I would let this all dry and then I do another hard line over here and I can make those decisions now as I'm as I'm going along cool okay so that was using string and a fold technique and then string with chance all right let's try let's try one one last thing using um using paint and string and that's just with me you can keep going because there i've only come up with uh, four or five different things that you can try but i know that your string is going to be different and there are probably plenty of other things that you can be um you can come up with and so before, uh, what we were doing was we were painting with string. But the last thing that I want to try before uh, we wrap up this week is painting on string. And for that, I am going to need a brush. You don't have to have a brush. I didn't put that in with my original tools. And so that's fine. Uh, you could use a rag. You can use your fingers. You could use another piece of string. Um, but on my background here, Actually, no, I will take another piece of paper. What I wanted to do was I wanted to take some of the string that we've used so far, put it on the page, and have it influence a painting. And so there's a couple of different ways we could, we could do that. We could just make it as a line, right? Go, okay, that's where, those are the borders. Those are the, those are the lines now of where the paint is going to go. And I picked a really, really big brush because I didn't want to have a lot of control. I just wanted to see what would happen, but you can use whatever size of brush. I said you could use a rag. So a piece of material to paint those areas. If you're using safe paint, that's okay to touch. So like me, I've got this watercolor paint where you're using um, some finger paint um, that's okay to get, to get dirty, then that's fine. Um, but you could just use the string is the outline and just paint in the areas a little more water there you go just paint in the area that the string defines Ooh, if the string moves so be it that means you've got more stuff to paint okay so now we've got this kind of deep dark line in this lighter line I kind of like that it doesn't go right to the edge. You could push it down so that you've got exactly no white showing, right? There you go. So it looks like I didn't go over the lines at all. But I kind of like it when it looks a little bit a little bit raw as if as if I didn't color or maybe I colored over the lines in a couple of different places. I like that. I feel I feel like that's got a more friendly feel to it. But maybe that's not the look you're going for. You can try it out. I also said, oh, and remember how I was talking about rags before? When you're painting with rags um, or having material with you, that's really great. I'm just going to use a piece of an extra piece of paper that I have here. But you don't always have to use water to clean your brush. You can take a piece of material and just pull some of the water and some of the paint off of your brush. And that keeps your water clean for longer. And you don't have to always push your brush back into the water. Okay, I'm going to put that over the side. I'll use that again. Okay, a little bit. And I have green. That method of using a rag is a great way of keeping um, paint out of the water uh, when you're pouring it down the sink as well. And so that what you're doing is, is you can either uh, throw out an old rag with the dried paint in it, um, or you can use it again over and over again when the rag dries out to just keep pulling paint off your brush. And so I said before, I can, oh, I'm going to go right off the page because I know that I've got my clean background in the background or the clean paper. So I'm not going to go onto my, my table. And same as before, I've got that outline, that dark outline of my string that's, that's there. But what happens if I just paint on top of my string? See, I'm going to use the paper again to get some of that off. 
I'm gonna grab some blue this time. All right, so I'm gonna paint on top of the string. So this string had some paint already in it. So I got this cool red line when I pushed down my paintbrush on it. Same with the green over there. But if these had been um, clean lines, do you see the white or clean uh, strings? Do you see the white where, uh, where I painted over top of it? Then they become blocks Then then they block the space. And so you could use the string to make um, a base drawing in here. Where are my scissors? I've got so much paper now. I've tried so many different things. Okay, I'm gonna take a couple of smaller pieces of string. And then I'll put that down there. Put that there, oh, put that there. I'm just coming up with an abstract shape. So it doesn't really look like anything figurative. It doesn't have um, a, a form to it. It's just whatever I wanted to put down. And now I'm going to pick pink. Same thing as before, using my paper or my rag to push some of that paint off. And here we go. You could also glue down the string if you had like a light glue. Oh, the string also moves around. That's cool. Right, and so now it's blocking off these different uh, spaces. Let me do this again. I'm going to do only. Actually, I'm going to do one. No, I'm going to do two again, like that. There we go. Put it over here, And then I could take my other, my string that I had painted and pretend like this was a, a painted line, and bring that into my drawing or into my painting. I could glue, I could glue these pieces of string. I could also glue these down so that they stick on the page and then I could just paint over the glued lines and then they would have texture. They'd just be a part of the painting. I'm kind of pretending right now because I don't have any glue and I don't really want to keep this. But if you were making something for keeps there, the water makes the uh, makes the string stick to the page. But there you go, right? And so the string could become a part of your painting, you let that dry, and then you just paint around the pieces of string. These are just a few different ways that you can practice painting with or on string. Um, that we tried today. We tried the, the, the painting on string. We tried string and chance. We tried string and folding. Here's another one of my folding examples. We tried tying paper or tying different objects together with string. Then we tried, oh, we tried, um, string as a mark making tool so for an actual drawing and then we explored a whole bunch of different techniques using different kinds of string so we tried a whole bunch of different things this week but if you tried something else that i didn't try i would love to hear from you you can always comment um, with our live making sessions on saturdays um, or you could just let us know on any of our social media what you're making at home Thanks so much for joining me this week. I had a blast. I'm going to leave my video running a little bit um, like I do all the time so that I can clean up because that's an important part of Explorers is that we always respect our space and our tools by cleaning up at the end of the session. And I can't wait to explore with you again for week three of string next Saturday. See you soon. Bye for now.